What's up everyone, it's me named Jamie and welcome to another Elite Diary Guide. In today's guide we'll be going over the Fremnik Elite Diary. Before we start the video I'd just like to mention that 98% of you guys who watch are not subscribed which is all good since the content is free but it would mean a lot to me if you could go down below and just hit the subscribe button since it really is effortless and it really does help the channel grow. Also shout out to the 0% of women who watch my content, big cheers to you guys. To start the guide, let's go over the quest requirements. You will need to have completed Lunar Diplomacy, started Fremnik Isles, and completed Troll Stronghold. For the skill requirements, you will need 82 Rune Crafting, 80 Crafting, 80 Agility, 70 Strength, Hit Points, and Range, and lastly, 83 Slayer. For your inventory requirements, you're gonna to wanna to start with 28 Pure Essence, one Amulet Mold, one Dragonstone, one Gold Bar, Fremnik Boots 3, a Lunar Isle Teleport, and a Home Teleport or House Teleport. To start the guide, teleport yourself to Relica with your Fremnik Boots. Then run directly west and start the Agility course. Completing the course will complete achievement number 1. After you are done, head directly north and talk to Maria on the docks. She will take you to Nesnot. Once you are there, head north and then east into the center of town. Once you are at the center, head a little north towards the Clay Forge and craft yourself a Dragonstone Amulet to complete step number 2. Next, teleport to Lunar Isle and talk to the banker on the far right. Bank all your items and withdraw the 28 Pure Essence you have. Once you have done that, head east out of town and then directly southeast. You should cross a bridge and then further east you will find the Astral Altar. Craft your runes on the altar to complete step number 3. Once this is done, teleport back to Lumbridge with your home spell or head back to the Lunar Bank to get geared up for Dagonoss. The gear I wore for Dagonos Kings was a Serpentine Helm, Fire Cape, Fury, Blessing, Carol's Top and Bottom, Dehyde Boots, Brimstone Ring, Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Defender, and a Whip. For my inventory, I brought two four-way switches for both Mage and Range, two Divine Combat Potions for both Range and Melee, one Prayer Potion, one Stamina Potion, eight Sarah Brews, four Super Restores, one Pet Rock, a Teleport to Relica, and a teleport out of the Dagonoff Caves, which for both of them, I'm just gonna bring a house teleport, one rune throwing axe, and one shark. If you cannot afford any of the switches in my inventory, really just bring the trident and mystics and a blowpipe and regular dehyde, since the blowpipe and trident are the only important part of the switches I brought. Once you have everything, teleport to Relica and head northwest to the docks. Once you are there, speak to Gerald to go to Waterbirth Island. Once you are at Waterbirth Island, follow the path until you reach the cave.
Once at the cave, enter and run directly northeast-ish. This should take you to the gate. Once you are at the gate, place your rock on one of the pads and then stand on the other pad and then open the gate. Before you go through, however, make sure you grab your rock in case you want it in the future. After you are through the gate, continue to head east and equip your rune throwing axe. Then activate your special attack and at the end of the tunnel, head a little south and you should find three plates. Attack the plate in the middle here and you should knock down all the other plates. Once all the plates are down, head down the ladder and put on protect from mage. Continue to run east to the next ladder and head down that ladder and when you are down that ladder, pray protect from range. Continue east to the ladder and then put on protect from melee when you are up it. In this next room, you will want to run south to the next ladder. Once down here, pray protect from range and head west to the next ladder. When you're down the next ladder, put on protect from mage in the next room and continue west again to the next ladder. Keep protect from mage on in this next room and head down the next ladder. Again, in the next room, keep protect from mage on and head south to the next ladder. Once up this ladder, pray protect from melee and continue east to the next ladder. Once down this ladder, throw and protect from range, follow the path all the way since there are no more deviations and just keep protect from range all the way to the end. Once you are here, pass by this ladder ahead of you and enter the little cove. This will allow you to rest for a second and check the Dagonoff room for people. Hop until you find a free world and we'll pick back up from there when you find one. Once you have found a free world, pot up and then turn on protect from range and piety. Enter the Dagonoffs and attack Supreme, who is the most green one. If Prime, this red guy is on you at the start like he is for me, immediately switch to protect from mage since he hits the hardest. This is by far the most difficult part of getting the dag kills, so don't worry if you use a decent amount of your supplies. While you are killing Supreme, go ahead and mark or remember this tile here. This will be the safe spot for the next Dagonoff King. Once Supreme is dead, equip your mage gear and run up and tag Rex. Then run back to the tile I showed you before. This should effectively safe spot him. Keep protect from mage on since Prime will be attacking you, but feel free to switch to Augury. Once Rex is dead, equip your range gear and finish off Prime. Feel free to switch to Rigor, but make sure you keep Protect from Mage up.
Once he is dead, you should be done, so congratulations on getting your Dagonoff kills done and teleport back to the GE so we can prepare for Bandos. Now in this next part I will be showing you how to kill every God Wars dungeon boss. I tried doing this with the cheapest setup I could find to make this accessible to everyone. So for the Bandos gear setup I wore a Serpentine Helm, Fire Cape, Fury, Blessed Dehyde Top, Torag's Bottom, Dragon Boots, Fear Ferocious Gloves, Berserker Ring, Dragon Defender, and a Whip. One super critical item to highlight that I'm wearing is the War Blessing which you need in order to not be attacked by Bandos minions. In my inventory I brought one Divine Combat Potion, one Prayer Potion, one Stamina Potion, seven Sarah Brews, four Super Restorers, about ten Anglerfish, one Hammer, one Trollheim Teleport, one Home Teleport, a Zamorakian Cape so you can avoid being attacked by those minions, and a BGS to lower the boss's defense. When you have everything and are ready to go, teleport to Trollheim and take the agility shortcuts down to the path. Follow the path to the God Wars dungeon entrance, and I'll be back when we get there. Also, on a quick side note, I teleported near Trollheim, but it's basically the same route for those of you who are confused and are looking at the video. Once you are inside the dungeon, equip your Zamorakian cape and run northwest. Over in this area you should see 4-5 to five goblins spawn. Keep killing them on repeat until you have 40 kill count. Once you have your kill count, run north over here to this wall and look inside the Bandos room to see if there is anyone inside. This is a great spot to hop until you find a world because it allows you to see into the room clearly. Once you've found a world, head west towards this door. Pass through it and then run northeast to the Bandos door. Once there, pot up and put your BGS on. Then put Protect for Melee on and Piety and head in. Instantly spec Bandos twice and then equip your whip. Make sure in general to keep your health high so you don't get comboed out. Additionally, after every two attacks, Try and step under him so you can save yourself some damage. After he is dead, kill his minions off and then teleport out back to the GE and get ready to kill Zamorak. For the Zamorak boss, I wore all the same stuff as the Bandos boss, except I traded the Dragon Defender for a Crystal Shield, the Whip for an Arc Light, and the War Blessing for a Holy Blessing. Make sure you grab your Holy Blessing, but if you don't have an Arc Light or a Crystal Shield, just stick with the Whip and Defender. For my inventory I have a Divine Combat Potion, a Stamina Potion, a Prayer Potion, a BGS, 7 Sarah Brews, 4 Super Restores, teleports to Trollheim and out of God Wars dungeon, and 14 anglerfish. Once you have all these things, teleport to Trollheim and make your way to the God Wars dungeon again. Once inside, run northeast to the ice ledge 
and jump into the cold water. Once on the other side, take the time to kill one spiritual mage as it will knock out another step of the diary. Otherwise, just farm the four imps wandering around the area until you have 40 kill count. Once you have the kill count, make your way to the door and pot up. Put Protect from Melee and Piety on and go inside and spec Zamorak with your BGS. Then, just like Bandos, hit him twice with your Arc Light and then walk under him in between every two attacks to save yourself some damage. Just like Bandos, keep your HP high so you don't get comboed out, and that should be the kill. When you are done, kill his minions, and then teleport out back to the GE, and we'll get ready for the Ceridome and boss. The gear for Ceridoman consists of an Armadil Helm, Necklace of Anguish, a Blessed Dehyde Zamoraki in top, bottom, and boots, an Archer's Ring, Barrow's Gloves, Blowpipe, and Ava's Assembler, and really importantly, a Holy Blessing. Overall, make sure you have something from Zamorak and Sarah so you don't aggro those minions. For me, it was the Blessing and my armor. For my inventory, I have a Divine Range Potion, one Prayer Potion, two Stamina Potions, a Dragon Crossbow and Crystal Shield, Bolts, two Ropes, seven Sharks, six Sarah Brews, and five Super Restores. I also have Teleports to God Wars and Out of God Wars. Now the Crossbow and Bolts is not necessary, but personally I prefer it to kill Sarah with. You can easily use the Blowpipe the whole time for the method I'm going to use if you don't have access to a Dragon Crossbow. Once you have all these things, teleport yourself to God Wars as usual, and I'll be back when we are inside the dungeon. Once inside, run directly east and use your first rope on the ledge here. When you are down here, I recommend killing the spiritual mages for your 40 kill count since they aggro on to this wolf minion and that will allow you to damage them and gain kill count without taking any damage yourself. Additionally, if you do not kill a spiritual mage beforehand, this will take care of that diary task for you. Once you have your kill count, head down this next ledge with your rope and head over to the door. Pot up and pray protect from mage and rigor. Step inside and attack Sarah, then run over to the left or right corner depending on where Sarah is located. Then start dragging her around the room like so. Usually you can get two attacks per wall without being attacked if you are doing it right. Maybe more if you are using the blowpipe, I'm not exactly sure. Make sure you don't run out of run energy and always stay far enough in front of her that you don't get attacked, since less damage here is always preferable to more DPS. Once she is dead, kill the minions and then teleport back to the GE for the final God War boss, Kree. For the Kree gear setup, I wore an Armadil Helm, Necklace of Anguish, Ava's Assembler, a Blessed Dehyde Zamoraki in top, bottom, and boots, 
Archer's Ring, Barrow's Gloves, Crystal Shield, Black Chinchampas, and a regular Blessing. Make sure you have a piece of armor gear here to avoid being aggroed by the minions. For me it was my helmet, but for you it could be your Blessing or any other piece of armadillo. For my inventory I have a Divine Range Pot, one Prayer Pot, two Stamina Potions, a Crossbow, a Mithril Grapple, a Blowpipe, nine Anglerfish, six Sarah Brews, five Super Restores, and a Teleport to and away from God Wars. Once you have all these things, teleport yourself to God Wars and I'll be back like always when we are inside the dungeon. Once inside, run directly south to this gap and grapple yourself across. Then run east to where the door is and kill the low level aviances until you have 40 kill count. I suggest praying protect from range during this since they can actually hit you for quite a little bit. Once you have your kill count, run over to the door, pot up and turn on protect from range and rigor. Make sure you have your chins and shield equipped and head inside. Immediately target Kree and simultaneously run over to the west corner. This will drag the minions and Kree over to the corner with you. Once here, target the minions with your chins. An advanced tactic that I struggled with is to target the minion and then Kree in between attacks. This will save you damage, but it is sort of hard to get right. Personally, I just kind of targeted the minions with the chins until it was dead and then I blowpipe Kree down, since we only had to get one kill. Make sure to keep your health high here though, as Kree can hit for quite a bit. Once you have killed Kree, finish off her minions and head to Relica to finish the diary. Speak to Thordin in South Relica and congratulations you have now finished the Fremnic Elite Diary. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if the guide helped you. The Discord is in the description below if you want to join. And remember, my name is Jamie, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.